Today we are painting autumn leaves in watercolor. The easy way. Hello, hello to all my viewers. My name is Alain and I'm your art teacher today, if you want. Let's start painting autumn leaves. Here we go. For the supplies, check out the description box below. Here you can see all the colors that I'm using today. Don't worry about the colors. You can, of course, use the colors that you have at home and that you like. We start with an ash leaf. I draw a pencil line to build a frame, so it is easier for me where to place the leaves. I start with a curved line. I load my brush with a light wash of color. I place the tip of the brush exactly on the thin line or I paint a very thin line and then I give pressure on the brush and so it gets wider and creates the form of the leaf. To the end of the leaf I lift the brush and so I create the tip of the leaf and I use two brush strokes for each leaf. And as you can see I mix or I change the color mix for every single leaf. Sometimes the color mix is more yellow or more yellow ochre or changes to a more orange tone. You can always turn your paper so it is more easy for you to, to paint the leaves. Here I use this strange angle of my arm because I'm filming for you. And I place a lot of color on the beginning of the leaf to create darker accents at the beginning of the leaf. Because of the variation of color we use here for our leaf, it becomes so much more interesting. And I always can correct the shape of the leaf, if I like. Don't worry if they are not the same size or angle, it's all about nature and no leaf is exactly the same. Now it's time to let the first leaf dry and we go on with the second leaf and we paint a linden leaf and let's paint a kind of heart shape. I create the heart shape and then I fill in the leaf with the first layer. I want the color stronger so I add a second layer. And here with a dry brush I remove some of the color and we create a kind of highlight effect. On the edges of the leaf I apply more of the dark color wash and I smooth out the edges. And now we let the leaf dry. Here I use the drag brush and I paint this curved line that becomes wider at the end. And then I take the brush number eight and I paint small leaves again. To create the highlight effect, I simply remove some of the color with a dry brush. Let's use a different form for the leaves. I want this branch look different and not like the first one. Here I don't make these long lines and, and then start the leaf. I directly start with the leaf here and I try to make them all the same size and shape. I love this color mix. It's this um, red, brownish, warm, intensive color and I think it looks gorgeous. I turn the watercolor paper around so it is easier for me to paint the leaves. As you can see I place the leaf exactly at the opposite side of the other leaf. And for the end of the branch I decided to make the leaves a little bit bigger and to intensify the color mix. Okay, and now it's time to return to the heart-shaped leaf. And I always check if the leaf is dry and if it feels warm, the color or the paper, then you can start. 
I use the jerk brush with a diluted brown color mix and I paint these slightly curved lines. And here I add a second layer to make it more intensive. And I really try to place the lines exactly opposite each, each other. <laughs> and then with the tip of the drag brush, I create these thin lines. I use no pressure on the brush. Then it's just the tip of the brush and very fine thin lines. And sometimes I, I paint an, an X form or a zigzag lines to create texture and I want to make the stem a little bit darker and I add a second layer. And with the same color, I add these thin lines on the red leaves. It's not a straight line, it's a little bit of a curved line. Here I change the color mix a little bit and I do the same on the first leaf. And you see the leaves become now alive and I follow the form of the leaf. And here I add a second line. Now I start to paint little lines. I apply them in short little brush strokes. The short lines give the leaf texture. I don't paint them to the end of the leaf. I quit about four or three millimeters. And now let's paint a chestnut leaf. So now we start with one of the um, air called difficult leaves. And here I paint a curved line and then at the half of the line I paint a short X. And this guides me where to place the leaves. We paint five leaves. First I create the outline and then I fill in the leaves. I make sure that they are not all the same size. I have elonged the first three leaves and the two leaves near the stem are the smallest and the shortest. And here I also can um, change the color a little bit to make some of the leaves more intensive. And again, let it dry. So, and now we go on with an oak leaf. I paint this short curved line. It doesn't matter if the leaf is botanically correct. It's just about fun, fun, fun and watercolor fun. I paint the short lines and I make sure that I smooth the line out when I meet the stem. I try to place this curved lines kind of symmetrically. I add a layer of color and I make these little lakes of color to and I place them randomly. And now here I paint this little red red strokes and I let it blend with the green color. Let's go on with the maple leaf. And here I paint the line so I know how many leaves I I have. And then I paint these little curved zigzag lines and I try to make each leaf smaller and smaller and to work out this typical jacked leaf shape of a maple leaf. Don't worry about the shape, you always can correct it afterwards. Sorry for the background noise, but my dog chases a fly and he catched it. Let's say we paint a maple leaf inspired leaf. Yay! The shape is done and now we fill in the shape. And 
and here and there I add some red and orange, mostly on the edges of the leaf. And I blend some of the color with the yellow color, but here also less is more. I would really appreciate it if you click on the like button because the YouTube algorithm loves this. So okay, let's return to the chestnut leaf. Here I use the drag brush again and I use this very intensive dark brown color and I paint this line to create the texture of the leaf. It's really easy and the trick is not to paint a straight line instead paint a slightly curved line that follows the form of the leaf. And then again I paint these short and thin lines with the tip of my brush. And they are not straight, they are slightly curved. I don't paint the line until the end of the leaf or to the outline of the leaf. With the same color I paint a thin line on the oak leaf and I place each line opposite the first line. Because the maple leaf hasn't dried I paint here a small maple seed. I paint two wing shapes as I call it. There is too much color and so I remove some of the color. Where the two wings meet I paint two brown circles. With the drag brush I paint a short stem. Here is the perfect place for a ginkgo leaf and as always I start with a curved line and then I create the shape and I try to paint it symmetrical or kind of symmetrical. The ginkgo leaf reminds me of the shape of a fan that is torn. Here I fill in the leaf again and here I create a little bit of the shape. I apply brown and orange on the edges of the leaf and then I paint short strokes. And with one short brush stroke I blend them together. For the maple leaf I use the same color mix as for the ginkgo leaf. And here I fill in each leaf with one line and I let it dry. And then I return to the maple seed and I draw here two circles and I fill in the circles and then I put some drops of color on the bottom to create a shadow effect. And now the ginkgo leaf has fully dried and I use the drag brush and paint these short curved lines toward the stem. And here I enhance some of the lines by uh, painting a second line over the first one. This is important, paint from the edge of the leaf towards the stem. Here I paint a pasture leaf. I use two brush strokes and then with the third brush stroke I correct the form a little bit and on the bottom of the leaf I add a lot of a darker color mix. Then let's return to the maple leaf. Here I paint a third layer and then I paint this little stroke or little lines to create the texture of the leaf. And if the color mix is too light then I add a little bit of uh, more brown and repeat the same steps. Some of the lines I enhance more and I also can change it to a more reddish color mix. The key here is not to fill the leaf with too many lines. And here I add the last touch to the pasture leaf. 
and I think here we can paint a second pasture leaf because we have a lot of space here. And let's repeat the steps. By adding more color here, we create this, this color gradient. So we paint the stem and voila, we painted 10 super easy leaves. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you like it and bye bye from Austria. And don't forget to watch my other videos.